Early last century, English aristocrat Lady Anne Selsden enjoyed visiting friends in the country. However, on one occasion, she was shocked to find herself in the location of a sinister paranormal presence. At one stage, some married friends moved into an old home, an ancient hall dating back to the 17th century in the county of Buckinghamshire. The couple were very popular and hospitable and so welcomed many visitors to their rural abode. It was during one spring that Selston was feeling particularly run down and so needing a rest cure with her vivacious friends. Unfortunately, on calling her friend Dorothy, she was informed that the couple had a full house the following weekend. Feeling desperately in need of a break, Selston persisted and asked if they could at least put her up in one of the attics. After a hurried discussion with her husband Robert, Dorothy asked if she would mind sleeping in the long room, as they called it. Selston soon happily made her way to the idyllic spot, finding a bustly house party of other guests. However, Robert was uncharacteristically concerned, repeatedly apologising for having to accommodate her in the attic known as the long room. Selston, who had stayed in the hall many times, had not even heard of the long room before, and Robert anxiously informed her that they never used it and that she would probably not like it one bit. Why, he did not elaborate. However, after the long climb to the topmost story of the old mansion, Selston was charmed by the room which ran the entire length of the house frontage. Long and narrow, its only unusual feature was an immense beam which crossed the ceiling directly above the oak four-poster bed. All evening, Robert continued to apologise for the long room, perhaps Selston thought due to its lack of electricity. Finally, she retired for the night by candlelight and a crackling wood fire, still wondering about all the fuss. She drifted off to sleep with happy thoughts of the evening just spent. Although not aware of how soon this happened, she was suddenly awoken with a sickening sense of terror such that she had never before experienced. The overwhelming panic seemed a reaction to the presence of what she described as a ruthless being, knowing neither pity nor remorse. Worse still, she was also physically afraid, in dread of her own life and even someone close to her being snuffed out. Trying to control her nerves, she felt the bedclothes literally dragged off her by such a strong force that she was unable to retrieve them. Huddled face down and helpless, she was overcome by a sense of wild emotion in the room as suddenly there was a cold rush of air as if from a hastily opened window. In the light of the dying fire, Selston could see something dark swaying to and fro from the huge beam above her head what she made out to be a figure that twisted and struggled. She realised in horror that a man hung from the beam. Lying there frozen with fear, she waited out the night until the reassurance of first daylight. She was then amazed to see that all three windows in the room were tightly closed and the place where the opening window had vented was solid wall. Convinced that she had witnessed some emotional drama from the past, Selston cut short her weekend visit. Her friends obviously knew of the phenomenon attached to the long room and appeared to feel a little guilty about her early departure. A few months later, Selston met a mutual friend, an army colonel who had also been a house guest on the night of her experience. He had noticed her hurried exit from her weekend jaunt and proceeded to explain the circumstances of the house hauntings. He first asked if she had noticed how their friend Dorothy sends her bulldogs out of the living room before 11pm. The reason was that she didn't want her guests to see how terrified they become at around midnight. Always beside themselves with fear at that time, they know who comes back to the long room every night. He explained that during the 17th century, the last family owner of the house was an aging aristocrat who was obsessed with money. Despite being a sir, he also moonlighted as a moneylender called Mr Silas, who funded and held to ransom gamblers and even high-living politicians of the day. Charging huge rates of interest, he constantly amassed money, always wanting more, and took great delight in ruining up-and-coming peers and other young men. 
he also wanted an heir. The aristocrat became infatuated with and wedded a lovely 18-year-old woman, bringing her to the family hall for that purpose. However, she detested him and so far had not been forthcoming in providing the offspring he desired. She was kept virtually a prisoner in the mansion with her husband frequently staying away from home due to his finance business, of which she was unaware. Somehow, the wife met a young man whom she started to walk with in the park. Eventually, their liaisons took place in the long room, which was well away from her husband's nosy housekeeper. However, one night, the lord of the manor returned two days earlier than expected. Flushed with success, having just bankrupted a promising young peer, he entered the main bedroom to wake up his wife, only to find that the bed had not been slept in. He hurried from room to room but could find no trace of her. He then remembered the unused upper room. First finding a strong steel chain and pair of handcuffs, he silently made his way up to the long room where he found the lovers asleep in each other's arms. Selsden had witnessed the events of this terrible crime, the young man helplessly struggling, suspended from the beam. The husband had torn the bedclothes from his wife and forced her to watch her lover's demise, until finally she could bear no more and threw herself from an open window, instantly perishing on the stone steps below. Selsden told her friend that this had explained the sudden inrush of air, but insisted that there had been no trace of a window where it had come from. The colonel informed her that the window had been bricked up from the outside in recent years. He said that the hauntings have always persisted in the long room, which is the reason their friends usually keep it locked up. She wondered why they would want to live in the house, but he explained that, apart from the problem with the spooked bulldogs, the eerie phenomenon seems confined to the long room alone, which thankfully no longer exists. The hall was eventually sold to a financier who altered it beyond recognition and the long room removed. Who knows if that vengeful husband still acts out his evil deeds on some other plane elsewhere.